This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you to worship today to this Adapted Youth Sunday service on Pentecost. Today in worship, you will hear our students sing and play their instruments, read scripture, and deliver our sermon. I hope that you are as inspired by the words, the hearts, the passions of our youth as I am. On Pentecost, we celebrate the Holy Spirit coming to us. It is incredible to see the way that the Spirit moves in the hearts and minds of all of our students. This is Pentecost worship, and we welcome you. The Spirit descends like a dove, bringing peace to unite the world. In a just and caring community, the Spirit comes like a breath, bringing life to renew the people of God. The Spirit spreads like fire, bringing energy for witnessing to the love of God. Sp Spirit of the living God, come to us and transform our lives by your power. Come, Holy Spirit, our souls inspire, and lighten with celestial fire, thou the anointing Spirit art, who dost thy sevenfold gifts impart. Teach us to know the Father, Son and the avowal to be but one that through the ages all along this may be our endless song. Praise to thine eternal merit, Father. Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We do not stop enough to listen to the still speaking God. And like the people of Jerusalem long ago, we often misunderstand the Spirit's movement among us. In the silence and stillness of this moment, let us draw near to God and listen. We confess to you, renewing spirit, that we confuse unity with uniformity and diversity with divisiveness. We speak and behave as if being a part of your family means assimilating others to our way of living. We deny and destroy the beauty you created in each person. We long to change these patterns, O Creator, but we do not know how. Teach us to value challenge. Help us to see strength in difference. And empower us to build your kingdom in creativity and love. Amen. Hear the good news. God's Spirit has been poured out upon all flesh, and we have been made one. We are no longer scattered or divided, but gathered together to build up the kingdom on this earth. Thanks be to God. We now have peace as forgiven believers. And this peace is too great to be kept to ourselves. Let us share the peace of Christ with those we love, whether we are together or connected virtually.
On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem, and when they heard the loud noise, everyone came running. They were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be? they exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages, and we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there, amazed and perplexed, what can this mean, they asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, They're just drunk, that's all. Then Peter stepped forward with the eleven other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen! Listen carefully, all of you fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood, and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. And when I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, again I bless your name you are my all in all seeking you as a precious jewel Lord to give up I'd be a fool you are my all in all Jesus
Please bow your heads and pray with me. Almighty God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, speak to us in the language of our hearts, that we may hear your word with understanding and answer your call with confidence. Amen. Our second scripture reading today is Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. I'm saying that as long as the heirs are minors, there is no difference from slaves, though they are really the owners of everything. However, they are placed under trustees and guardians until the date set by the parents. In the same way, when we were minors, we were also enslaved by this world system. But when the fulfillment of the time came, God sent his son, born through a woman and born under the law. This was so he could redeem those under the law, so that we could be adopted. Because you are sons and daughters, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son or daughter. And if you are his child, then you are also an heir through God. Here ends our reading from Galatians. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Many of you may know my sister, Sydney. She just finished her sophomore year at Colorado State, and I'm finishing my senior year at Libertyville High School. And if you do know Sydney, you might know that she and I are extremely different people. She loves to talk, she's always in the middle of a conversation, and she thrives off of being surrounded by others. I, on the other hand, would rather sit on the couch watching a movie than be found in a social setting. Sydney's much taller than I am. She has straighter hair than I do. She's always dressing up and thinking a lot about what she's wearing, and I'm usually in sweatpants. So, all this to say, Sydney and I are totally different people. But let's put that all aside for a second, because Sydney and I are a lot more similar than we might like to admit. First and foremost, we're children of God. And as much as Sydney and I hate to admit that at our core we're essentially the same, it's true. And that's true about every single person listening to this. It's true about every person in this town, and this country, and this world. We're all made in the image of God. Despite any differences we might have, our core is the same. We are all children of God. The passage from chapter 4 of Galatians compares us to slaves, bound by the rules set within our society. Later, the passage reads, Because you are sons and daughters, God sent the spirit of his, of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a child of God. And if you are his child, then you are also an heir through God. The first time I read this passage, I was like, okay, cool, that's nice. Um, but then I started thinking about it a little more, and I realized how profound it really is. Sydney and I might be sisters, but you and I are siblings in Christ. And as we heard last week in Galatians chapter 3, verse 28, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. We've let society construct differences between us. We've let society pit us against each other. We've let society tell us that one person is lesser than another because of their skin color. We've let society tell us that we should prohibit a woman from marrying another woman. This is not God's intention for us. Instead, we are to lift each other up and love our neighbor as ourselves. What kind of Christian am I if I refuse to love and support my gay neighbor? What kind of Christian are you if you feel it necessary to clutch your purse more tightly when there's a black man behind you in the grocery store? The basis of Christianity is love. You even said it yourself as we recited the summary of the law earlier in the service. We all declared that we first must love God and second, we must love our neighbors. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. You all remember that, right? We say that we love God, and we say that we love our neighbors. That belief should not be disregarded when we leave church on Sunday mornings. Where is that belief when we're arguing about whether or not our church should proclaim that Black Lives Matter? 
We cannot claim to be children of God if we don't let God's light shine through us. We can't claim to be children of God if we don't let God's love be the basis of everything we do. During my time in the church choir a couple of years ago, we sang a song called Stand in the Light. This song talked about how one of the hardest things to do is announce to the world that you're a Christian. And for me, there have been times where I've been ashamed to admit that I'm Christian. I've been ashamed to admit that I practice the same religion as the people who stand outside Planned Parenthood harassing women because they might be going in to get an abortion. And I continue to be ashamed that I might be associated with that kind of hatred. But I'm sick of being ashamed because I know that we're better than this. I know that this church rejects this kind of hatred. I shouldn't associate myself and my religion with those who refuse to accept their neighbor for who they are. I shouldn't associate myself and my religion with those who don't recognize the basis of Christianity as love. And neither should you. We should be proud to announce that because we are Christian, we are full of love to give. Because as far as I'm concerned, the most Christian thing you can do is love and support your neighbor, no matter how different you think you are from them. Something I've noticed about this church in particular is that it's full of people who really care. This congregation is full of people who do let love guide them. Our congregation cares about those around us and those whose society has deemed lesser. I love that we've created an anti-racism and equity task force, and I love the work our church does to support missions like PADS in the food pantry. But as great as it is to care about our neighbors, we also need to know them. As great as it is that we work to support communities in need, we also need to befriend those communities. Because what can we, as a predominantly white congregation, possibly know what it, about what it's like to live as a black woman in America? How can I, as a white teenager, talk about the experiences of Hispanic immigrants at our nation's border? The answer is simple, really. I can't. We can't. So we need to not only provide for our neighbors, we need to know them. Until we have members of our congregation who come from all walks of life, we cannot truly know our neighbors. I don't know exactly how we can go about building a community more representative of our world, but I hope our church fights together to find paths forward rather than fighting against each other. Today is Pentecost. Today is a day where we celebrate God's gift of the Holy Spirit, who came like a rushing wind and tongues of flame to unite the people gathered in Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit transcended the divisions of those in the crowd. The Holy Spirit, who Jesus promised would be our companion and our advocate, came to us and is still with us today. Let this be a call to you to question the box society has put you in. Let this be a sign to surrender your limited understanding of love and instead live into the expansive love that's only possible through God. This love will lead you to places where you're surrounded by those who aren't outwardly similar to you, and that's good. This love will lead you into relationships with other children of God, who are siblings in Christ, all made in God's image. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a child, and if you are God's child, then you are also an heir through God. This is God's promise to us, and God's promises are everlasting. Amen.
Well, I don't know about you, but I always feel the power of the Holy Spirit moving in my heart and in my life when I listen to the way God is at work in the life of our young people. I hope this worship is an inspiration for you. And I'd like to hear from all of you. If you can please sign in on our virtual friendship pad available through our website or on Parish Life, we want to know that you've joined us and let us know if you need to be contacted by a pastor or have a prayer request to share uh, for us. We want to be united with you by the work of the Spirit in that important way. On June 6th, looking forward, we will be celebrating our Baccalaureate Sunday, and we'd love to know about all of our graduating high school students. Uh, also, if you are a college graduate, pass along the word to us. There's a way to let us know by checking out the link in Parish Life. We hope that you will uh, join us with that. Women, there is a women's retreat coming up uh, at Ryerson Woods on June 12th, and today is the deadline date uh, for you to be able to participate with the early bird discount. Take advantage of that today, the early bird discount for our women. Finally, I just want to make sure that the families and children of our church know that there are some great intergenerational uh, celebration events taking place over the course of the summer. Our intergenerational faith formation team led by uh, Reverend Ryan Wallace and Kara smith Laubenstein, have organized these events and uh, we're looking forward to having you join us. You can learn more about that in Parish Life. Be sure to mark your calendar for the summer. We'd love to have you participate. Now I want to invite you to consider how you might offer your heart promptly and sincerely unto God. This is the work of discipleship, receiving the grace of God's love in Jesus Christ and in gratitude living out that uh, life of faith day by day. We hope that you take advantage of our online giving opportunities and we're grateful for the way in which you participate and support our ministry in that way, reaching out uh, throughout Lake County and around the world and participating in the care that is accomplished through our ministry team here at First Press. But now think not only about your financial gifts, think about your time, think about your talents, how your calendar reflects your faith. This is an invitation to discipleship on which you can meditate as we move forward in our worship. Forgiveness was 
bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, and oh, what a Savior! Isn't He wonderful? Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen, bow down before him, for he is Lord of all, sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Dear God, we gather here to bear witness to the glory of your work in the world. We stand in awe before the wonderfully imperfect creation of our physical reality, but strive to live beyond it. To speak, to love, to act, not just in accordance with our own whim, but to live by the fire of the Holy Spirit within us. We are a broken people, absorbed in a consumerist and divisive ideology, left altogether too often feeling hopeless and empty. We were destined for more. You did not just choose to share the faith with the priests, the elect, the flawless of the world, but sent flames down from the heavens so that all might understand the word. You knew us as the flawed creatures we are from the very beginning, and you gave us love from which nothing can ever disqualify us. O oh God, inflame our spirits so we trust in the plan you have for us and are comfortable in the small places. Inflame our hearts so we might love all people in the way Jesus taught. Do not make us hate along the world's lines, black or white, cisgender or transgender, conservative or liberal, gay or straight, for these societal constructs will dissolve in the kingdom of God. O oh God, inflame our minds so we might discern your higher truth for ourselves, actively searching for our values rather than absorbing views from social media's echo chambers. Inflame our ears so we can actively listen instead of tuning out conflict around us in favor of a blissful ignorance. Help us listen about the struggle between Israel and Palestine, to not ignore the human rights violations in China, to accept that the United States is altogether imperfect too, to truly listen when others speak. Inflame our hands so we are not simply a people of thoughts and ideas, but a people of action. Let us not shy away from the hard labor, but embrace the struggle necessary to move toward the kingdom of God for all of us. Let us strive to achieve justice for all people, rather than stopping our labor when the system is enough for us. Inflame our eyes so we might see beyond the temptations of this world, and where others see devastation and impossibility, we might see a new life reborn in Christ. Inflame our mouths so we might speak your truth, setting this earth ablaze with a hope rather than existing passively as victims of circumstance. Let us not squander the wonderful inheritance bestowed upon us by being silent. Inflame our body so we can stand steadfast against the torrential downpour of life, refusing to let our flame go out. Let us spread like wildfire in the darkness, reclaiming the earth and setting your church on fire. When the world could fall apart around us, let us sing ablaze, banding together as one people, one church, under one God. For nothing can stand against the power of our God, and the battle belongs to you alone. Amen.
Vater unser im Himmel, unser Vater, was in die Himmel ist. Dein Reich komme. Ma pensi a qua ti mise. In the Himmel also auch auf der Erde. Lesen wir Kapitel Himmel. Ios i dag vårt dagliga bröd. Uriga uriege che jin jaril sayo jun gok kachi. Shiado no grishin na nostre. And I don't sneak in for shopping. Jiu wo men tuori xiong e.
And now be charged and sent with these words from 1 John. Dear friends, let's love each other because love is from God. And everyone who loves is born from God and knows God. Amen.